Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's time to take global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Professor Chris Mustafa Wakobia Jr. He's a convener of Country First Movement. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. The pleasure is mine. Good morning, mm. I'm good. Mm. Welcome to the program, sir. Welcome. All right, we started with the punch this morning, and the punch leads with a Dangote refinery. It says crude supply crisis threatens oil investments, operators warn federal government. And the writer here says federal government urged to deepen investors' confidence. Dangote allays fear over refinery fire. So yesterday, um, we saw videos and pictures of a part of Dangote refinery burning right it had, there was a fire incident well it has been said that it's, a, it's an accident but we're just asking for more investigation to be done now to ride back with this is what dangote has said i think last week or a few weeks ago saying iocs have been threatening or trying to sabotage um you know production at his refinery and now this week we're seeing a fire incident as well which is being termed as an accident but with all of this do you think there are people really trying to sabotage dangote refinery especially when we know that it might just be the only working refinery in nigeria at the moment I want to get your take on this story. Uh, let me start with saying first, look, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I yes. can. The challenge that uh, came up in the news yesterday first, um, two pronged the uh, issue about supplies of crude oil, um, like the newspaper analysis, the newspaper report, posits the issues of supply of crude, the issues of the uh, challenge that Dangote finds, and then there's a top leg, which is important to what you have raised. Um, how does this impact the... My challenge, uh, Uma, is the fact that I've said time and again that NMPC Limited must first come back to the Nigerian people about our supplies of crude, the availability of crude, what transactions were done over the years, particularly towards the end of the uh, Buhari's administration without crude, and then why a country that's one of the, supposedly the second largest, it was the first, uh, crude oil exporter in Africa, and then went behind Angola, why we were unable to meet uh, international quota, why we were able to meet the quotas uh, like report, as reported by the Punch that should uh, go to the, the refineries here, and then why Dangote is in trouble. And I was discussing these issues with someone yesterday, and what we actually concluded is that the dragons that hold down the oil sector, those who have decided to hold down the survival of our country, those who sabotage everything that obtains in that sector, a full, strong, effective, efficient, and effectual, and they must continue to milk. They must continue to sabotage. Sabotage. They must continue to fleece our collective patrimony. So you ask yourself, why should a nation that has well over 1.3 million uh, barrels of crude oil allocation not have supplies for its local refineries? You ask yourself, why Dangote will have to import? Oil. Then you ask yourself why, um, lastly, the sabotage that happened there yesterday. And you understand that we are Yambu in a rogue state. We are Runa in a rogue state. And I sympathize finally um, with Dangote. I think that the, the tragedy of it all is that uh, the Nigeria is coming full circle. Those who at some point uh, thought that uh, profiteering from Nigeria and changing all our laws to suit their individual and whimsical caprices are also becoming victims of the ogre. You know what the ogre is? Mm -hmm. It's an animal that eats even itself, you know, mm -hmm. so or eats its kind. And that's how bad it is, you know. I sympathize with our sector. I sympathize with uh, the Nigerian people who are ultimately the victim 
of this last and the victim of this wickedness. Mm -hmm. You know, I was looking at the, the punch and I was looking at the issue from the angles that it was raised and uh, bringing it back to the issues that you are your concern. Uh, you find out that when a long, long look, a long vicious circle of uh, today we think that the challenge of fuel scarcity, fuel price hike is going to be attended by the largest refinery in the world built in Nigeria, the Dangote refinery. And then tomorrow you're told that uh, I'm speaking in deep sense that the refinery is aflame. The next thing you're told that you cannot make riches of your investments. The next angle you're told that the uh, the sector and the policy guide in the sector is not efficient and effective to make you run profit. For what reason do people do business? Is it not to make profit? Now you ask yourself, okay, there are no supplies, so you have to import. At what cost are you importing crude oil? And then there's a whole lot of, um, I think, probably my choice of words, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as polite as I can, but I'm troubled that I may not be able to send sufficient sense or make sufficient sense in this pragmatic or polite approach. You ask yourself, your nation is a minefield, is a well of crude oil. You have refineries, you have investors who cannot get supply. It's like the proverbial instance that you're in the water and so blinds you. Mm. Mm. Can you understand where I'm coming yeah. from? You're putting so much resources and you cannot get supply. You you need, you have a factory ready, you need a supply, and you're under well of that product, but you can't get it. Nigeria has become such a comedic and comical theater of the absurd. Now, time was when we were asking people to invest in the oil sector, build modular refineries, build refineries. Now some of them have built, in the same country they can access crude oil. You know, Uma Yangu, sometimes you wake up and when you discuss your country, you got tears welling up in your eyes and you ask yourself, okay, those who intend to come here to invest, what is the challenge? What is the interest? What what will drive their passion? Now, um, when the Dangote refinery began to uh, make preliminary productions, people shouted handel, and yours is certainly was one of those because I consume a lot of diesel uh, before the. Uh, churned out their first liters of diesel. Diesel stood at about 1,700 naira per liter. When we were saying, oh, thank God, it's coming down to about 1,200 naira per liter. Now there's fire in the refinery. So I, I think that the cells pool, there's a cold sack of sorts. There's a major problem with how we run this country. It's roguery, it's wickedness, it's villainy. It's something I can't explain. So um, when I saw the headline of a punch, I asked myself, are we coming full circle so quickly? Mm. Are we in trouble completely? Are we jinxed? Are we doomed? Where are we headed to as a people? Well, Even that's... those who are investing can make profits, they are scared, they are telling government that the investments are threatened. Even that's those unfortunate. who intend to come in are saying, oh, if this is how bad it is, we can't come in. So are the Nigerian people condemned to perennial price hikes or absence of products? Why is this country this difficult? And why is leadership so unwilling to attend these issues? Like I said, it's, it's very unfortunate. Now we are hearing Dangote is planning to be importing uh, crude oil from America. And then I was just asking the other day, what is so impossible? Importing already. Yeah. So I was just asking, why is it not possible for the oil wells that have been put up for bidding, why not just 
let Dangote bid for one of these or, or I don't know, something, <laughs> make it easy for him to extract his own oil and, and maybe refine. Uh, but maybe the economists will know better why that is not happening here. But no, no, but are you aware? Are you aware? Please let me chisel this in. Are you aware that the last administration allegedly battered billed our oil for they said uh, Maliki Ari and NNPC Limited sold our oil for about three, four years in advance in exchange for about three billion dollar loan? Are you aware that the whole thing is all shrouded in mockiness? Are you aware that we live in a country where things happen and nobody asks questions. And when we ask questions, people take it to ethnic and political lines. Are you aware that some of us who have a living conscience are troubled that the people in Kenya are awake and rising up to challenge government? And here, when you talk about your oil you world, people say oh, you're against Tinubu. People try to individualize issues that affect people. Are you aware that as you and I talk, that there specul are speculations in the market space? that uh, a liter of petrol will sell from today or tomorrow for 720 naira. when, as it were, a few weeks ago, we celebrated the fact that Dangote had told us that soon he will start selling PMS, that's petrol. You know, Yambu, I, I talked to you and to Nigerians with so much tears welling up in my eyes. I don't know where we're headed. And I think that it's all about the absence of political will. Yeah. We do so much of propaganda rather than progr progressive progr programmatic action as a leadership. You know, so I think that those who sympathize and solidarize with political parties and, and government must understand that we're all in this same Titanic. We're all in the same sinking ship. We all go to the same market. We have our kids and our children in schools. We pay uh, at the same supermarket. We shop at the same places. Nobody comes to the market and they're told that because you're from the APC, you buy a tin of tomatoes for 20 naira. And because you're not from the APC, you buy for 200 naira. We're all in this same Titanic. Mm -hmm. And I think that Nigerians must understand, like Rizzo said a long time ago, when the poor have nothing to eat, very unfortunately and most definitely, they will eat the rich. Mm -hmm. So I'm worried. Mm, okay, well, the National Assembly resumes seating, plans 2023 budget implementation extension. That's another small headline there uh, on the punch. What are your thoughts? Uh, I, I think that when, and I'm sorry to say this, when I hear news about the National Assembly, what comes to my mind is uh, puppet on the puppet here. All comes to my mind is the rubber stamp. You know, what have they done that is pro the masses. They've actually consistently approved resources and allocations to government. They have approved and applauded the building of uh, uh, a house of the vice president. They celebrate things that do not have direct impact on the Nigerian people. So whatever plan they have in extension of a budget, perhaps it will concern how much more allowances they get, how much more allowances the president and the vice president gets and how uh, their profligacy and their weightage of our collective TO continues. I am not excited. I'm not uh, impressed. Uh, whatever they do, uh, there's something my late father used to tell me, that everything has an end and everything has a beginning. There is definitely going to be an end to all of this. It will come to pass, you know, uh, the eight years of uh, Buhari's larceny and profligacy have gone. You know, the fact is that I have confidence that Nigeria will outlive these uh, locusts. I have confidence that Nigeria will outlive this age of unbridled land larceny, wanderlust, and wastage of our collective world. So I am not excited by the worst National Assembly we have had in our historicity, particularly since 1999. Uh, Akwabio's Senate, Akwabio-led National Assembly is but a rubber stamp. So, if you like, let them extend. What we know is that they are all about themselves and about the president who uh, is a puppeteer. And that's what it is. Mm. All right, let's move over to the Daily Trust. There's a small headline at the top that says Nigeria borrowed 7.71 trillion naira in quarter one 
2024, and that is being said by the DM or the Debt Management Office, Nigeria borrowed 7.71 trillion. At what point are we going to stop borrowing? Just one quarter. Just one quarter. At what point are we going to stop borrowing? And even if we have to, what are the what are the things they're using this money for? How do we get to know that they are being used rightly, um, maybe for infrastructure to develop a sector or something? So at what point do we stop borrowing? Or even if we have to, is it really necessary to borrow 7.71 trillion naira in just one quarter of 2024? Let me give you a shock up. I have never really had problems with borrowing, but if you're borrowing for investment, for infrastructure and development, then it's largely understandable. Yeah. But you know what? This administration borrows to buy vehicles. This administration borrows to build houses for operators of state. This administration borrows to pay aids of government and and large we have the largest cabinet since twenty since nineteen ninety nine. This administration borrows for profligacy and wonder lost. This administration borrows to buy new aircraft for the president because the office of the president is more important than 200 million people because the office of the president must be dignified when 200 million people are hungry, bare-chested, jobless, and in need of life. This administration borrows for everything untoward and that is why in less than, in about a year and a few months or a few weeks, do you know what we have? We have this administration, uh, uh, this administration has borrowed almost more than Boris administration borrowed in four years. That's how bad it is. And then like you asked, what are they borrowing these monies for? Show me what they're doing, you know. And um, my worry simply is that until this government understands the Nigerians are not blind to the realities of now, until they understand that this profligacy and tendency for wonder lost and, and, and wanton waste of our resources, until they understand that if it is not abridged, you will have Nigerians out on the streets in anger. Until they understand that so when except something proactive and effective is done to rekindle or rehearse the fading uh, hopes that the people have until something is done to inspire confidence that this government will get it right there is consistently a dip in the fate the nigerian people have and that dip will definitely, I mean, DIP, that deep will ultimately lead us the path of Bogota, or the path to Bogota. But I want to say um, confidently and passionately this morning that uh, the DMO is doing a fantastic job by not allowing political uh, considerations uh, make them sex up or doctor the figures. They are doing a fantastic job, you know. They are the ones who came out a few weeks ago to tell us that this government has borrowed over 120 trillion, or our stands at over 120 trillion. They are coming out to tell us that in one quarter this government has borrowed so so and so, and that's how uh, effective and efficient they have been. Uh, I pray that this government understands that Nigerians are not blinded by ethnicity, partisanship. Uh, and the likes. I pray that they understand that with Nigerians, hunger is in discriminate of political parties or ethnicity. I also pray that they understand that ultimately, when you push a people to the wall, they will not break through the wall. It's happening in Kenya. It's happening across the world. My mentor Martin Luther King Jr. would say that except people are able to understand that the human blood is the same and that the challenge for liberty and freedoms runs with the human uh, human DNA. And then until they're able to understand that what would ultimately happen is that people, humanity will take challenge, they will take a cue. You know, with what this government is doing and what those who side with this government are doing, um, the ultimate repercussion will be something worse and stronger than the NSAS uh, revolution that we had about two, uh, three years ago. And, and I'm saying this without a complication. Um, hunger deepens, the government is growing more, hunger is not reducing, and I'm painting the circle. 
Um, people are seeing governmental operators with brand new SUVs uh, not produced at, produced at home. People are seeing government, government operators buy new cars, buy new houses. They are seeing them throw parties and travel around the world and their families are doing extremely well. And the divide between the poor and the rich is, is a massive chasm, is a massive gulf, is a massive gully. And nobody's talking to the people. Uh, when the people complain, all you hear is that they're spending money on another uh, white goose chase, on another white elephant. Uh, when people are talking about the need to uh, tackle inflation, you're hearing the government is interested in buying new aircrafts. When people are complaining about the, the, the weakness of the Naira, you see government importing and spending more dollar and and, and the circle continues sickeningly. It's a sickening bishop circle, and nobody's doing anything about it, and you think that it will continue ad infinitum, ad nauseum. It is not possible. For everything in life, there's a beginning and there's an end, but there's a time to reap what you sow. You know, ultimately, I pray that those who pretend government rise up to the reality of now and understand the urgency. Nigerians cannot, and Nigeria cannot continue to borrow without effective impact, positive impact on the economy and the lives of the Nigerian people. So, Rune, I understand your concern. Uh, Yambu, your concern is my concern. For how long will this borrowing continue without commensurate impact on the lives of the Nigerian people? And I think the answer will ultimately be, for how long will Nigerians continue to fold their hands and watch the collective despoilation, the collective wealth, waste of our collective wealth and patrimony. Okay, uh, we'll move to Daily Independent now uh, because we're running out of time. Um, we were just concerned, we were talking about it earlier on, what is happening in River State. The Daily Independent has a headline there, uh, second largest headline, if I may. Explosion at hotel, ploy to force state of emergency. That's according to uh, Fubara on the reverse crisis. So many other newspapers have it uh, this morning as well. So uh, even though the state government has said that they have caught this per person who did this, but we are worried about what is happening generally in River State and how it might affect Nigeria as a whole. Your comments, please. The biggest business in Nigeria has become politics. Mm. Someone should be turned over the state for eight years and has been elevated to the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory. Instead of concentrating on his new brief, he wants to govern uh, River State and at the same time, by policy, and at the same time, go on Abuja. And when it has become almost impossible because the God's son has realized that what's called the people living with is exactly how well he has performed and has risen up to the challenge and the state, I must be left to do my job, you know. And so the Godson Godfather uh, accord is broken, and the Godfather must destroy the levers of governance in River State. The Godson must react. That's the picture, you know. And unfortunately, the state is in trouble. Unfortunately, uh, governance must suffer because one man must get away with his individual and egotistic interests and aspirations. Uh, that's what we have. That's a picture. And so anarchy is let loose on the land. I, I pray that the people of River State rise up to the challenge. I pray that they understand that the manipulations of men will ultimately lead to the trouble of many. The manipulations of a few men will lead to the trouble of many and that's exactly what we have but but do you now, think it should just be left in the hands of river state do you think it should be left yeah. in the hands of river state because this is something that could spiral into something greater yeah even to nigeria that, that's yeah. what i'm going to that's what i'm going to i i think that that's one challenge to the people of river state they must call the parties the godson and the godfather to order the godson will realize that he must carry his people along and ensure that there is sizable security protections of life because that's the primary reason for which government exists. And then we must call Mr. President uh, into this scenario. 
low platitudes. You know, remember a few weeks ago, the spokesperson to the president told us that the president isn't taking sides for anybody. But beyond not taking sides, he must call the security agencies to, to action. We must prevent River State from going the way of Abyss. We must prevent River State from going to bloodshed and to trauma. And I, I believe that the first, way, the first thing to do is to call Wike, the FCT minister, to order and ask him to help in his voice. And then the second thing to do is to ask the governor of the state to uh, galvanize public support and ensure that his commitment is first to the well-being of the people, the protection of lives and properties, and delivering on the promises of democracy. These are the fundamentals, and this that's the minimum that is expected of Fukara. And, and I think that he's doing his best at that. I, I believe that what is necessary now, what is tried and important now, is for Mr. President to ask Onwike to face his duty in Abuja and ask his boys to allow the state, you know, because um, the efforts like people have hazarded in various guesses is the fact that uh, they want the president to declare a state of emergency, keep the government, the governor out of government house for, for as long as they want so they can recalibrate, replan, and perhaps push him out. But the truth is that uh, in the 21st century, this tendency for British action must be lampooned and criticized. In the 21st century, we must ask people, Mickey has lost out, let him wait and then regroup and go to with whoever he wishes in 2027. Allow the state to thrive, allow the state to be in peace, and allow, if he truly loves the state like he's always said, allow the governor to do his bit. It's about four years, uh, and, and a year is gone. It's about three more years, you know, in 2026, politics will begin full scale. He should go and mobilize whoever he wants to take him out with. And allow the state to try. What is important is that those who truly care about our country, who truly love this country, must ensure that might is not right. That the rule of law must prevail. And ask those who exacerbate conflict and crisis to deactivate and allow, uh, allow the peace in River State, for instance, and any other state where you have snippets of Godfather, Godson uh, crisis. <clears throat> well, I mean, I hope that we can move on from the whole Godfatherism in Nigeria and allow people to do their jobs right, and then our states will just even flourish mm. and get developed the way we want it to be. It's quite sad what's happened in River State, but we hope that, you know, the president will step in and all of the agencies as well will also step in to be able to curb this menace and before it even spirals into the whole of Nigeria as well. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Professor, we want to say thank you for coming and reviewing the papers with us. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. God bless you. God bless Nigeria. Have a nice yes, day, sir. Yeah. All right, so we're speaking with Professor Chris Mustafa Wonkobia Jr. He's a convener of Country First Movement. And we've just been taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break and still ahead is El Rufai Sue's Kaduna Assembly Over Probe Report. Please stay with us.